There was plenty of cause for optimism over the Australian dollar early this week. China's return from a week-long holiday meant a resumption of reliable prices for iron ore, and through Wednesday, spot prices were up each day to above $71 a tonne, a high since March. Broader commodity price indexes such as Bloomberg's reached highs since June. Less helpful though for the Aussies' attempt to rally from 32-month lows near 70 cents was the poor sentiment in Chinese equities. This was initially only a background concern for the Aussie dollar, but equity weakness was much harder to ignore on Wednesday when US markets posted their largest losses since February. FX markets responded in their traditional manner to the equity slide, with the Japanese yen strongest and commodity currencies lagging. But the scale of the moves in FX was not remarkable and indeed started to reverse on Thursday and Friday, suggesting that investors don't yet see the equity moves as a game changer. The experience of Q1 2018 seems instructive. The February US equity turbulence was genuinely large, but Federal Reserve officials repeatedly brushed aside any suggestions that the Fed might be more cautious on raising rates, proceeding with a hike in March. If anything, the Fed sounds even more confident about the resilience of the US economy than it did in Q1. So the Fed will probably regard the equity pullback as immaterial to the growth and inflation outlook. If that's the case, it is probably wise for FX markets to not be aggressive in response to this bout of equity turbulence. Markets are also likely to place little weight on President Trump's criticism of the Fed, which he blames for the stock market sell-off. Trump said that the Fed had, quote, gone crazy. Market pricing for another Fed rate rise in December is around 75%, little changed over the week. Lending support to this pricing has been upbeat Fed commentary and the US September employment report, which reported that the unemployment rate had fallen to 3.7%, the lowest since 1969. So the Fed seems unlikely to change its tune on interest rates, though 10-year Treasury yields have slipped back from seven-year highs, weighing a little on the US dollar. In the week ahead, we will hear plenty more from the Fed, while data releases include China Q3 GDP, New Zealand Q3 CPI, and in Australia, the September employment report. It will be difficult to repeat the 44,000 jump in jobs in August, but the unemployment rate seems likely to hold close to the six-year low of 5.3%. Commodity prices suggest that the Aussie dollar should push higher and there are calls in Chinese media for fiscal stimulus to support growth as Chinese exporters struggle with US tariffs. But it may be hard for the Aussie to recover above 72 cents if equity markets remain jittery and with Australian political uncertainty elevated ahead of the 20th of October by-election. We'll speak to you next week.